Is everyone enjoying the summit so far? I just showed up today. And, uh, the uh, organization team is amazing. They're so well organized. I've never been that well organized for anything in my life. And I've got speakers coming out every 20 minutes. It's, uh, it's like a fashion show, actually. It's very exciting. There we go. Yes, thank you very much. All right, so, uh, as the internet says, my name is Peter Backus, and I wrote a paper a few years ago called Why I Don't Have a Girlfriend, an application of the Drake Equation to Love in the UK. Um, to give you a brief history of this paper, because I think it's important to give it a little bit of context, um, this is far and away the most successful thing I have ever written or will ever write in my entire life. Uh, it's been downloaded hundreds of thousands of times, and for an academic to have a paper to be downloaded that many times and read that many times, it must be something that is profoundly influential and may even lead to a Nobel. Unfortunately, <laughs> for me, this is also the silliest thing I have ever written in my life or will ever write in my life. So it has not been that influential, but hopefully it's entertained one or two people. Um, uh, 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 and the, the other point is that there's many other examples of this exercise that, that exists out there that came to my attention after it got all this, this media attention that you can see uh, on my website. There's some links to various examples of it. So, with this in mind, why I don't have a girlfriend. Um, in 2008, 2007, 2008, I was experiencing a period in my life that I called the great loneliness. And in this period, I did not have a girlfriend. Um, and, and I was reading a book by Carl Sagan, and you might say, well, that might explain why you don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> uh, I was reading a book by Carl Sagan, who's a very famous astrophysicist, cosmologist, uh, popularized uh, cosmology um, for, for decades. And in this book, he talked about something called the Drake Equation. So what is the Drake Equation? Well, this is the Drake Equation. Um, but what is it actually? Where does it come from? Who's it named after? Well, it wasn't developed by Sir Francis Drake, nor was it developed by a man Drake from Harry Potter, nor was it developed by a Canadian actor and hip hop soon to be legend Drake. <laughs> um, it was developed by this man, Dr. Frank Drake. Now, Dr. Frank Drake is also a cosmologist, astrophysicist, who was interested in the goings on of the galaxy and the universe. Uh, and one thing that he was primarily interested in was uh, finding one of these in this. <laughs> he wanted to work out the chances of finding that. So what he did is he developed the Drake Equation. Now the Drake Equation is a very simple equation. Don't be intimidated by the math. There's only one equation that's very simple. You simply apply a series of increasingly restrictive criteria to a given population, and the resulting subpopulation will meet those criteria that you've applied. So he first worked out the rate of formation of stars capable of supporting planets, the fraction of those stars with planets, the average number of those planets that are Earth-like, so you don't want gaseous planets like Saturn, uh, the fraction of Earth-like planets that can support any kind of life, the fraction of those planets that can support intelligent life, the fraction of planets with intelligent life that can have TV, radio, capable of interstellar communication, and you get to G, which is the number of intelligent civilizations capable of interstellar uh, 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 communication. Now you're probably wondering at this point, what does this have to do with economics? Well, what does that mean? Um, so, what did Dr. Drake find? Well, there's about 300 billion stars in the, in the uh, Milky Way galaxy. And he predicted there'd be about 10,000 communicative civilizations in the Milky Way. About a 1 in 33 million chance of, of uh, finding a communicative uh, uh, civilization if you pull them at random. Now, the bad news about this is the odds are very slim. So the chances of us finding this alien civilization with whom we could communicate are very slim indeed. However, the probability is positive, which means there is a chance of finding a communicative population. Ah. Dr. Drake was interested in finding one of these and one of these, but I was more interested in finding something much more important. Finding one of these and that. <laughs> I wanted to work out how many potential girlfriends are there out there uh, for me. So I re-parameterized Dr. Drake's uh, uh, equation. Rather than G being the number of communicative civilizations, G became the number of potential girlfriends. So I take R being the rate of formation of human beings in the UK. We're going to set that at about 150,000 per year. We also want uh, the fraction of that population that are women. Now, it may be different. In fact, one of the other examples of this was written by a, uh, a, a PhD in, in uh, space mission design in Canada, which I think is the coolest PhD anybody could ever have. But he's gay, and he wrote a very similar paper to this, and it's, it's sad for, uh, if you're gay. The, the population is much smaller. But for me, I'm interested in women, so it's about 0.5 of the population. Now, I'm also interested in having somebody that lives in London, because I live in London, and I want someone to be close to me. In part because if she's my girlfriend, hopefully I want to spend time with her, and in part because if she's closer to me, we'll stay on train fare. <laughs> So the proportion of women in the UK that live in London is about 0.3. Now, yeah. <laughs> 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 we should not applaud his behavior. Don't be happy about that. 
all you need to, to, to any Italians out there have Italian friends and it's a very sad state of affairs. But age appropriateness is a very important question. I don't want someone too young, because if they're too young, we may get in fights because I don't know who he is, <laughs> or because I don't care about that. <laughs> now, alternatively, I don't want them to be too old because, well, I just don't want someone else to be old. <laughs> so, let's say I'm interested in women between the age of 24 and 34, and the percent of uh, women in London uh, with their kids' age is about 0.2. Now, education. Uh, I'm interested in having a girlfriend who has a university degree. Now, people emailed me once I read this paper and said, oh, you're being elitist, why do you only want a girl with a friend on the university? And I'm not trying to be elitist. I know there are many intelligent people that have not gone to university, that's all well and good. But for me, I'm interested in someone who has a degree. I want someone with whom I can talk about my work sometimes and a bit of formal training will uh, ease that process. So, we all have preferences. I just want someone with a degree, so I'm not being elitist, don't be angry. We said that at about 0.26, is it? Now, attractiveness. The numbers prior to here are objective. These are taken from the Office of National Statistics, and these are actual figures. These are the percentage of women with degrees in London, the percentage of women in the UK, the percentage of London, and so forth. This becomes subjective, and it's hard to measure this, because attractiveness is subjective. Now, I have Angelina Jolie up here, not because I find her particularly attractive, but to demonstrate the subjectivity of attractiveness. Now, most people would hold her up as this paragon, this ideal of feminine beauty. To me, Angelina Jolie looks a bit like this. <laughs> so keeping that in mind, I'm not interested in just women that are attractive. It's important that those women are attractive to me. I can recognize a particular woman as attractive, but she may not be attractive. So some people said I was being too picky. I don't think I am. I said about one in 20 women with a university degree between 24 and 34 that live in London, I will find attractive. Oh, we also need the length of time because we need to figure out uh, the formation of star, or in this case, the formation of ladies. Uh, and I'm 32 years old, and I have not much to say about that. <laughs> now, we're going to make a quick transition in the Drake equation, a quick simplification. So what Drake had done, he integrated, over the rate, he integrated the rate of formation over the amount of time that stars were being formed, to work out the number of stars that were out there. We're just going to make a, a, a simple adjustment and take the population of the UK as of 2007, which was about 60 million people. And we're going to use that as our base population and apply these restrictive criteria, increasing the restrictive criteria to that population. So, simply plug in our values, and we work out that G equals about 10,000, similar to the number of alien civilizations in the galaxy. Now, you may be, and this is about two, uh, point, not point, not one seven percent of the UK. Uh, you may be thinking, that's not so bad, especially for you. <laughs> 10,000 doesn't seem like a tiny number, and uh, I might have been buoyed by that. However, we're forgetting some very important criteria, some very important components of someone who's a potential girlfriend. The first one is, are they attracted to me? Okay? And of course, I don't want just someone that I'm attracted to, and if she's going to be my girlfriend, she must be attracted to me. And this is already set at about 0.05, again, 1 in 20, and this is indeed depressingly low. <laughs> I'm also interested in their availability. So I don't want to find somebody who's married or has a boyfriend. It complicates things uh, significantly. <laughs> so I'd like to just have someone who's single and available at the time that we meet. And we're going to say this is about half. Now keep in mind this would be decreasing with age as well, which can complicate matters if we wish to use that into the model. Now, this issue of compatibility, do we get along with one another? Again, it's a subjective measure. It's very difficult to quantify. ONS has no statistics on the number of people in the UK with whom I would get along. <laughs> so I carried out some very unscientific research to try to determine the characteristics of individuals with whom I do get along. I looked at my friends, I looked at family members that I actually like, and tried to work out what are the traits that we have in common and came up with three important factors. First, if you love ice cream, if you think Anchorman is one of the great artistic achievements of the last thousand years, and if you think we've all had about enough of Richard Hammond, we will probably get along. And we're going to set this at about point one. So, once we apply all these rigid criteria, the objective, the subjective, which may vary from one person to another, I think I've been rather uh, 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 conservative in my estimate. But of the 61 million people in the UK, how many potential girlfriends are there? 26. <laughs> That's a very small number. Now this might depress you, or it might make you happy. It really depends on what you think your chances are uh, were before you saw this presentation. So what is the bad news? Well, the bad news from this very simple application of Dr. Drake's equation 
is that taking someone from random, at random from the UK, the odds of them being a potential girlfriend are about 1 in 285,000. So it's about only 100 times better than finding alien civilizations. <laughs> uh, it's also significantly worse than the odds of dying. <laughs> Probability remains positive. <laughs> no friends are not, in fact, science fiction. And indeed, shortly after writing this paper, I found one. 